Hey, hi! Welcome to the series of A Spice Sessions. I am Tota Krishna Hema, your A Spice expert. So today we are going to discuss about CIS1 process area that is called requirement elicitation. So why I have picked up this as a last priority is this is not our in video scope, but it is crucial for the product development uh, life cycle because this involves the elicitation of the requirements and uh, which means like we need to dig deeper while we are capturing the stakeholders requirements or the supplier requirement uh, let us get into the details of this process area and the further slides what is the purpose of requirement elicitation the requirement elicitation purpose is to gather process and track evolving stakeholder needs and requirements throughout the life cycle of the product and or service so as to establish a requirement baseline that serves as the basis for defining the needed work products if you see the purpose of it like it is both applicable to the product and services as well so um, it serves as the means like the outcome so let us discuss in the uh, the details of the outcome of this process area in the next slide process outcomes as a result of successful implementation of this particular process of the requirement elicitation we with continuing communication with the stakeholder is established this this time by this time the stakeholders are our company if we are if we are a supplier if we are the uh, the product development company or the service company so we need to get the get the relationship or the communication mechanism between your customer and you and the second point is agreed stakeholder requirements are defined and baseline so we need to document all the stakeholder requirements and we need to baseline it we need to get the approval from both the parties like it is defined it is complete and it is up to date kind of so when the requirements are approved then it is stated as a baseline requirement document so the third point is a change mechanism is established to evaluate and incorporate changes to stakeholder requirements into the baseline requirements based on changing stakeholder needs so we need to establish a mechanism to handle the change requests which we which we expect during the processing or during the progression of the of this particular product or the services so we need to define a change request handling mechanism throughout the project uh, the point four is the point four or the point four uh, a mechanism is established for continuous monitoring of stakeholder needs uh, so we need to get uh, or the monitoring mechanism or uh, the stakeholder needs like we will capture uh, or we will meet up like for example we will meet up the customer on such as such and frequency like fortnightly weekly and we will track all the uh, points which is given as a feedback from the customer or like action items so we need to track them we need to monitor whether it is implemented or not like this particular mechanism to be established and the fifth point is a mechanism is established for ensuring that customer can easily determine the status of status and disposition of their request so so it may be a tool like uh, a ticket tracking tool uh, like your zira or any other tool like which tracks the request um, and which tracks the request means like uh, when you get a request from your customer then you will make it as open and when you're working on it then it is in progress when it is done then you can mark it as verified and or closed so whatever is defined in your uh, in your strategy in your customer handling strategy uh, so the sixth point is changes arising from changing technology and stakeholder needs are identified the associated risks assessed and their impact managed so whenever see today's world is 
evolving is into evolving technology so today's technology won't be there sometimes it won't be there tomorrow also like it may get old after a month or after a year so we have seen we have come across those kind of situations in our previous experiences so that's that means like we need to identify the evolving technology or the change in technology uh, and the stakeholder needs so that all we need to keep in our mind and we need to uh, report it into risk and we need to track the impact of it and the impact of the risk to be managed so what is the best practice when talking about obtain stakeholder requirements and requests obtain and define stakeholder requirements and requests through direct so solicitation of of customer input and through review of customer business proposals target in operating and hardware environment and other documents bearing on customer requirements so the bp1 talking about the the how you are capturing um, the requirements and the requests how you are managing it how you are gonna um this like dig it the elicitation uh, is a term like if if you dig deeper into the requirements then how it will be so the bp1 talks about obtain stakeholder requirements and requests so th this is th this is how like we have to document kind of Thing. so note one is stating about requirements elicitation may involve the customer and the supplier uh, note two is the agreed stakeholder requirements and evaluation of any change may be based on feasibility studies or in or cost and time and time strat time analysis the note three is the information needed to keep traceability for each customer requirement has been gathered and documented your best practice too is talking about understand stakeholder expectation ensure that both supplier and customer under understand each requirement in the same way so this bp2 see bp1 is talking about you have to document your requirements uh, you have to keep in your mind like you know you have to involve both customer and supply to get supplier together uh, we need to keep in your mind like what is the what is in scope what not in scope from your proposals and your target environment and your hardware environment so all these things you need to keep in your mind and you need to document your requirements and your bp2 talks about uh, you need to understand the customer requirements and the supplier requirements as well so both supplier and customer should go hand in hand so uh, the and the understanding or the sync in between both the parties is to be in the same level it is expected to be in the same level so if you understand requirement one in in one way then your customer also need to understand the same requirement in the same perspective so bp3 talks about agree on requirements so obtain an explicit agreement from all relevant parties to work on these requirements that means you need to approve you need to authorize the requirements that is these requirements are are okay kind of so agree on these requirements okay and bp4 talks about establish stakeholder requirements baseline formalize the stakeholder requirements and establish them as a baseline for the project use and monitor monitoring against stakeholder needs the supplier should determine the requirements not stated by the stakeholder but necessary for specified and intended use and include them in the baseline so your bp4 is talking about baselining of requirements baselining of requirements means that is uh, the initial point or you know that's where like you need you have you thought like the the requirement is enough the requirement uh, captures the enough data that means both from the supplier and the customer uh, so whatever to be included is is there and we can start working on it kind of so that means we need to establish a baseline uh, baseline to the requirement and we need to 
consider we need to state uh, state all the uh, stakeholder requirement stakeholder point of view into this particular thing and once it is baseline your bp5 talks about manage stakeholder requirement changes manage all changes made to the stakeholder requirements against to the stakeholder requirements baseline to ensure enhancements requirement uh, enhancements resulting from changing technology and stakeholders needed to needed are identified and that are that were affected by the changes are able to access able to assess the impact and risk to initiate risk and initiate appropriate change control and mitigation action so this is nothing but your change control or the change request management so this is talking about and your entire how you are managing how you will track how you will um how you will baseline it how you will make how will ensure uh, that it is closed so what are the associated risks with this particular change so what is the impact of this particular change so this all to be tracked and mitigated and this this is how it is talking about bp5 bp6 talking about the established customer supply customer supplier query communication mechanism uh, provide means by which uh, the supplier can be aware of the status and disposition of their requirement changes and the supplier can have the ability uh, to communicate necessary information including data in the in a customer specified language and format so this is talking about we need to have a proper communication mechanism uh, that means your uh, ticket tracking system your status reporting system your uh, um, communication your mail communications to be in a clear format and we need to consider all uh, you need to track every of the every of the conversation or every of the decision which is made and every of the discussion point and we need to track all the action items out of it and um, this is how we need to manage we need to manage the customer supplier relationship relationship enough in a specified format so this is all to be documented and uh, see in case like the, these are the meetings like in in which uh, the custom both the customer and supplier will be there and they will have the uh, they will have the interaction and they will they will come up with the action items they will come up they they will have a walk through in these particular meetings so all the clarifications will be there in this meeting like uh, if the supplier needs some clarification on a requirement so he will ask and the customer will give the uh, clarification on the requirement even so after the work like if the supplier want to make a walkthrough or a demo demo of the outcome then uh, the customer will review it so this is nothing but your joint review process so SUP 4 is talking about uh, this this process uh, and what are the output work products so this the output work products are the risk management plan risk mitigation plan communication record the review record change control record analysis report analysis report is your requirement analysis report requirement elicitation analysis report and your stakeholder requirements so this is the documentation this is the main documentation like 1703 1703 is the main outcome of this particular process thank you so much for your time if you like this video click on the like button if you if you want more some more interesting topics on the automotive then subscribe to my channel thank you